Hello, Torchwood fans. Uh, sorry for the short delay there. Uh, my name's Hugh Fullerton. I'm the sci-fi and fantasy editor of RadioTimes.com. Uh, really hope that you've enjoyed the uh, watch-along we've just done, the RT watch-along for Torchwood episode 12 of series one, Captain Jack Harkness. But you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from our amazing guests. Uh, so we've got John Barrowman, who plays Captain Jack Harkness himself. Well, one of two in this episode uh, talking to us. And we also have uh, special guest Nico Mori, uh, who is also a big part of the episode, who is joining us today. So I'm just going to add those guys in now. So should be here any second. Hello, John. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Nico. Oh, Hi, guys. How are you doing oh, today? It's a little bit dark in here. Hang yeah, on. Turn some light on. Let's see your face. Oh. Oh. Hi. Hi. Hi, guys. Oh, did you watch the app? Yeah. Sad, wasn't it? So sad. And uh, sorry, Matt Rippy was watching also. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody oh, who's watching. So funny. I was just trying to like send a, a tweet out to say that we're here, but I can't work it out. <laughs> what to send it? Yeah, yeah, to like send this, this. The link. link. Well, it's www.radiotimes forward slash dot ask Captain Jack. No? There's actually, there's, there's no, it's www.radiotimes.com slash ask Captain Jack. All one word. Oh, I gave my dad the wrong one then. <laughs> It's fine. We'll be here. We'll all fine. And this will this will be online afterwards if anyone wants to catch up afterwards. Okay. So if you can give give us the oh you're drinking. I'm not. I've got water because it's daytime. It's nine o'clock over here. Yeah. Do you like my Do you like my Captain Jack? It's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah. So question shoot. Yes. So um, guys, I've got to ask. Um, what's it like watching that episode again? How long has it been since you last saw it? So long, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't watched the that one probably in eight years, maybe. But I've yeah. watched I've watched other episodes, but I haven't really gone back to that because that one was one that oh, really well. is kind of stuck is stuck in my mind that uh, you know with what happened and how it happened and all that kind of stuff. It's a good episode, but I haven't. I, I didn't go back. I went back and watched the first series after a little while. Look at it, Torture. <laughs> um, all all right, that. Keep so yeah, it's been a while since I've watched it, but it was. It stands. It stands alone. It's really good. And how about you, Nako? It's been a while since you'd seen it as well. It's been ages. I mean, it's been ages. You know, I, I don't really like watching myself. You know. Yeah, I love watching myself. What's that? I love watching myself. <laughs> but you know, it's just, it's still fresh. And I don't know if for you guys, um, I don't know. It just takes me right back. I was crying. Yeah. You know, I cried on the day. I remember when that episode, when, when you guys were dancing, I, th they were real tears. Well, that so. was the first, that was the first time anything like that really had been done in that kind of, Situation. I know men had kissed before on television, but not in such like the kind of romance story. It was always kind of secret and hidden. And uh, yeah, I might be speaking out of turn, but I, I said for people to remind me about this. But I remember making a speech to the entire group when we were uh, filming. And I said, look, this is not for people to be shocked by. This is a situation where everybody in here, they're either going to go off, they're going to die tomorrow, or they're going to go on with what they have to do to save, uh, uh, you know, to win the war. So anything that happens in this room, they're privy to, and everybody lets it happen. That's why when we did the kiss, no one around was going, oh, or gasping. They let it happen, and I wanted to make sure, and I know we talked about this from a directorial kind of thing, that we wanted it to be normal. We didn't want it to be outrageous or shocking people. Yes, there was one, you know, of the, the soldiers, the, the other... Uh, uh, airman whose face was a little bit like, what are they doing? Because he wasn't used to it, but it wasn't like, oh my God, that's gross. No, that's one of the things that struck me actually is you, you assume when that moment's coming that there's going to be a big reaction from the people around. But actually there's, it's quite, these 
quite soft expressions on people's faces because they're in that moment, right? Correct. They're in the moment because they're all thinking the same thing and they're let live and let live. And also that they may, you know, we all know that the, the Captain Jack uh, is not going to live past tomorrow. So, you know, they don't know what their future is. So that's why there was that element of letting it happen. Um, and, you know, I, I like you said, it was huge at the time. I mean, nowadays you see a lot of sci-fi in the mainstream TV shows and also, you know, a lot of LGBT stuff. You know, this is how many years ago? It's 10, 10 years ago, I think. 13, I think. Two years ago. 13. 13. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know, um, but at the time it was huge, it was a big, big, it, it was quite uh, what's the word? Um, it, groundbreaking, yeah. And we all know, Owen, we said the word, fuck. did we? Yeah, Owen went, I have a, I, he was something like he's arguing with Yanto and he's saying, you know, I'm second in charge here, I have the fucking right to do, and I was like, what. <laughs> um, given all this stuff, were you guys really pleased when Torchwood fans picked this episode specifically for this first rewatch? Well, I personally would be happy with whatever episode they chose because for me, I've always said if Torchwood is being watched and being recognized, it's always a good thing for me and a good thing for all of us because it means that it's still out there and it's popular. But um, I'm pleased at this one because it shows that. Uh, it was uh, the the idea because it not only dealt with uh, LGBTQ plus stuff, it de dealt with racism, with Toshiko, mm -hmm. them uh, yeah. hacking her for thinking she was Chinese. Uh, and then when they found out she was Japanese, that they were attacking her still. That young lady was attacking her because they thought she was a spy and she would be doing detriment. So you had all these different multi-layers of stuff going on within this show. So I'm really chuffed that they did choose it because... It's a multi-layered cake. I mean, that, that brings me on to my next question, because Nako, I mean, it's quite a big episode for Tosh. You know, we all think about, it's about Jack and Jack's backstory, but we learn a bit more about her family life and stuff like that. Was that was that interesting for you to delve into? Yeah, it, first of all, it was great to get out of the hub. Um, yeah, I can imagine. I know she, um, she uh, came out of the hub a couple of times, like countryside. But also it was kind of, I, I love the script because it was kind of an intimate, you know, uh, just to be able to be with um, Jack and also the whole traveling back in that time. And and um, yeah, completely. And you know, it's, 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 it's still so fresh. It doesn't feel like it's really dated that mm -hmm. much question no. mark um but what i loved about torture and the way russell wrote and the, the whole thing was it's not like a sort of jabbing your face sort of oh someone's phone sorry <laughs> rude sorry <laughs> was everyone calling to say how much they enjoyed the episode john yeah probably i just have to let it ring. i'm so sorry it's right take take, the, take phone call i'm not, i'm looking at <laughs> Um, no, it's for Scott, and he's on the other line. Anyway, oh. leave it. We'll leave it. We'll watch. Do it later. There we go. Go ahead. Um, but I, what I was going to say quickly was, you know, it wasn't sort of like we weren't throwing stuff in your face. I don't think, like, you know, it it wasn't like look at this sort of, um, you know, gay couple or this happening. It was just, it just, it was more incidental, and yeah. you it, know, it was a, it was a romance. It was a story about Tosh and Jack. It was a story about Jack and Jack. It was also a story about the conflict between Yanto and uh, <laughs> Yanto and uh, uh, Owen. And then it was also a fact that you had Gwen who was showing her skills in taking in more of the kind of a, a leadership role in that aspect. So everybody, it was, a, again, a multi-layered episode that had everything in it, multiple stories going on. But I think it was beyond this episode that we started doing, uh, we would do a, episodes where it was, you know, uh, group episodes, and then we would focus in on characters. Mm. And it was about individual characters. And that happened more than in season two, because if I'm right, there was 14 episodes in season one? I think there was 13. 13. So this was the second to last. Yes. And then we went into season two, and we started then 
and we moved networks. So we also then had to change uh, again to become something different. That's one thing that I will say that the, the writers, the team, um, all of the people who worked with us on set, everybody adapted to that change because we were on BBC three, then we were on BBC two, then we were on BBC one, then we uh, went to uh, a cable network. And every time we did it, we had to adapt and change. And Torchwood was, Torchwood was always up to the challenge, which is why they should bring it back. Yeah, I mean, we had so many questions actually on that. When we did an, an ask, ask Captain Jack for this Q&A. Oh, very nice. Little prop there. <laughs> right, shall I put three on this? Oh, no, five? Five, uh, yeah. Five. Um, well, we had so many people coming in. Um, asking yeah, the thing, we'll, we'll get the to thing the is, questions. But yeah. The thing is, for people who are watching it, the, in order for that possibly to happen, you have to watch it on iPlayer. Because mm -hmm. even though you're watching it on D, and this is for the you know uh, our fan family in the UK, that they have to watch it on iPlayer to try to get that to happen. Because that's you know the great success that they've had with uh, that Eve's had with um, um, uh, keeping faith. Keeping faith that it was such a huge success, uh, also on iPlayer that then it, it was put on. I think it's been put to BBC One, but they're making the next series again, so it's it's given it things more life. So yeah, it can happen. Wait, what happened? Someone's saying we will die. What's going on? <laughs> Anal, why are you going to die? Just ignore them. I think I think they're dying with excitement at seeing oh. it again. <laughs> I don't think Everyone's saying, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. I mean, you know, Naoko and I know from when we do like conventions and stuff around the country, we did one in a convention in, uh, uh, as a group, we all got back together and we did a Torchwood reunion at Olympia in London. And we had the biggest turnout of crowd amongst all of the side, the shows that were there. Everybody was, everybody from other shows that were there you know, um, like the DC stuff that I was involved in, they all came to watch our panel because they couldn't believe how many people were outside of the, the, the venue, you know, waiting to come in and also that were stretching outside the hall where we did the panel. So there is an audience for it out there and it's a freaking great show. I mean, I, I, obviously, I'm um, watching at home. You probably can't see, but we have a massive stream of comments coming in as well every couple of yeah. weeks. Yeah, I'm watching them right now. Yeah, no, I mean, people at home might not be able to know that, but yeah, we have so oh, many yeah. people engaged. It's, <laughs> it's, great, it's great to see so many people. You know, people have said they've been watching on iPlayer specifically for that reason. You know, to keep it going, bring Yanto yeah. back. So you there. have to watch it on iPlayer. Is that is is that the well, deal? Well, no, no, you can watch it on for the BBC to take notice. You obviously have to watch it on iPlayer, but that's not to say that another production company couldn't. Uh, collaborate you've got uh, and that's when I go to meetings here in the States uh, um, well when they're happening uh, I go in and people always ask one thing out of a lot of producers mouths are how can we buy Torchwood how can we make Torchwood because they loved it so yeah there, there's an appetite for it anyway I don't want to hamper on about it and we'll move on to other questions but the thing is you can watch it on Hulu Amazon Prime Apple TV and you can also oh, watch it on Apple TV? Yeah, if you go on Apple TV and you type in Torchwood, it will take you to the the oh, like Hulu and, mm -hmm. Correct. It'll take you to where you can buy it. But Amazon Prime has it, and you can get it on Amazon Prime. Yeah, there's so many different places to watch it. And um, obviously, I feel like you say for UK fans, it's so easy to watch it all as well now. I've been rewatching it recently. Loads of my friends have. It's been really great to revisit and just kind of go back <laughs> to that time. Yeah, it's not like we have a lot of places to go at the moment. <laughs> Torchwood, Torchwood's perfect. It's perfect lockdown viewing. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we should go back to the episode at hand, though, Captain Jack Harkness. Um, I've yeah. got to ask, you can cast your mind back to, you know, 13 years ago, whatever we said it was. When you guys first read the script for it, did you know then this is this is quite a special episode? Were you thinking this is going to be a good one? What do you think, Naoko? I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm trying to remember. This is episode... 12. 10? 12. 12. Season one. Well, we knew we knew that we were coming towards. Well, we knew that with the penultimate and the ultimate, it's always going to be sort of ramped up. Mm. And I remember Richard telling me that I, I get out of the hub, which I was really excited about. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, the table oh. reads usually were always exciting because it was always involved with uh, the entire cast and. Uh, I didn't like to read the episodes until we got to the table reads um, because I always like to just keep it fresh to not know what was coming up so I didn't play something differently 
while we were doing it with what was going to happen. But the one thing also about season one of Torchwood that made this different is every episode was a standalone episode. There was a beginning. <laughs> there was a beginning and there was an end, right? And there was a little bit of a through line to the series. However, as we then progressed, it became more so there was a through line in the series. So it was exciting to see this episode to also tackle because Jack, for me, Jack had already done something uh, that changed the face of television when I kissed the doctor in Doctor Who. Mm. So there was that element, but to be able to do it again in my own show, but I'd also, I think by this point, I had made out with uh, Yanto, with Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did. yeah, of course I did. And, and the, there was the, and when, when the episode where, um, you know, uh, Lisa was locked in the basement. Yeah. Yeah, and he got mashed up and beat up or whatever. I think I kissed him in the pool of the hub. That was the first. No, that was off camera. That wasn't on camera, was it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> there was a few of those too. Behind the scenes, had to practice. But yeah, so it was it was exciting. The, the the Captain Jack episode was a major ground marking one because it also told you who Captain Jack. Well, that you didn't really know who Captain Jack was. No, I mean I was supposed to ask about that because. This is an episode that kind of we learn more about Jack's backstory throughout Torchwood, especially in series two. But this is kind of, you know, we're sort of this is kind of the seeds of it, isn't it? You know, those terrible creatures that we went to war against, the fact we took the name. We're sort of learning what he was up to before we first met him in Doctor Who. Correct. And that was um, if we go back to the Beauchene Peninsula, that's where it all started with Gray and uh, him protecting his brother Gray. And that's probably what he's, uh, he says a friend of his because they didn't want to give away the brother. I'm, I'm assuming, I'm yeah. not saying this was his lore, but I'm assuming he was talking about then about his brother rather than his friend because he protected them. The friend was weaker. The friend was Torchwood because as we find out later in another season, Gray comes to attack Jack because he was left, he was tortured, and it was when they were younger that they were fighting those creatures that attacked uh, the Beauchene Peninsula. So all that history is given, and that's why I remember – looking at it, watching it this time and saying, you know, to myself, oh, that pause that I did was interesting because I, I never answered the Toshiko's question or, or uh, I never answered uh, Captain Jack's question. You know, I just paused and left it hanging. Hmm. What I loved about this episode too was that you get to see a very different Captain, uh, a very different Jack, hmm. you know, um, and certainly a Jack that, I, uh, Tosh has never seen. And I think probably none of the other um, Torchwood members have seen. So I felt kind of privileged as Tosh, you know, Tosh I think would have felt quite privileged to have kind of seen that and must have been a little bit like, oh my gosh, you know. He, um, he has a heart. Yeah. By the way, happy birthday, Alicia. It's your birthday today, right? Oh, now nobody, people don't start asking for birthday requests. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never hear the end of it. We'll be here all night. My husband Scott's birthday today, too. Well, happy birthday to Scott as well. Yeah, he's um, on the phone taking phone calls. We have a lot of questions. Yeah. Well, so are these, are these questions, when are we going to get the questions from the, the folk dokes? Uh, so, yeah, I was going to come to that. Um, are we, I've obviously, fans. When, we, been, start, when we stop talking. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, fans have been sending in their questions uh, the last couple of days. Um, and we've been uh, pulling them together. So we have, we have a lot of questions because everyone's you know very excited. Um, so I guess I've got a first one here, if I can just pull it up, if you guys have some popcorn. <laughs> okay. uh, so this one's from Dan. Uh, it's a bit small, but he said, uh, did you find this episode challenging, just for you, John, as most of its focus was on the history of your character? Uh, I, uh, challenging in the way that I'm not kind of, I'm not angsty as an actor when I do uh, stuff. I just kind of get on with it and do it and and play it as I'm doing it. I don't try to overthink it mm. or worry about it. And that is the, uh, so if I was going into it, I, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know the story that I'm supposed to tell, but all those moments, like what I was talking about, those pauses, those are basically things that you kind of discover also when you're doing the blocking rehearsal or you're doing the rehearsal of the the with the other characters because you don't know how they're going to play it yet. Right. So cool. you have to do the block. You you can't decide how you're going to play something before you've got there with the other person. So when you start doing the scene and rehearsing it, that's when you feel it. And then when you're rolling it 
and you're you're rolling, then you can start doing things on different takes to kind of add a little bit of flavor to it. So about telling his history and his story, I was excited about telling his history and his story because I always thought, again, I'm a fan of the show, but I always thought Captain Jack was always Captain Jack Harkness. So for me to discover that that was, you know, oh my God, there's two of them now. Where did the name come from? Then all of a sudden there's this more history behind him. So it was more fun than it was kind of like a, a challenge. Yeah. Honestly, they're so clever, Russell and Chris and all the I mean, unbelievably. And we've got to give props to uh, Catherine Tregenna. Yeah. Yes, Catherine wrote that. Catherine was the one who wrote this episode. Yeah, and she's actually joined Twitter tonight specifically just to join in with the, uh, the watch along. Yeah, she was she was watching. So um, I, think I mentioned Catherine's okay. name at the beginning of my live feed just to because I read off everybody's name on screen. There you go. Um, so I've got another question here from Declan, um, who says, if we pop it up there. Uh, this is for both of you. Do you have any memories from being on set filming this episode? You'd hope you'd have some memories, but do you have any specific memories? I hated my laptop bag. <laughs> <laughs> because it kept like, especially when John twirls me around, like it just kept like knocking us in our face and like it just, it just wasn't, um, yeah. So what, I mean, the other thing is funny is, um, I know. I hope Naoko doesn't mind me saying this, but don't ask Naoko to run in high heel shoes. <laughs> because she, would, we would have these scenes, and we'd be like, and, and even there, like when she's. That's why I made a comment on Instagram. I said Naoko's doing a lot of fast up and down stairs because she had to practice going up and down the stairs in her heels. I literally had to like gaffer tape. I, I had like tape inside the shoes so it wouldn't come off it's really <laughs> hard to like block heels have you ever tried running and well no actually. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I've, done, I've done eight shows a week in heels yes <laughs> <laughs> um the other uh, the other thing was that people don't might not know this who watch but naoka and i when we did that little dance sequence we were quite comfortable doing that because we actually have danced before naoko and i were in miss saigon together Way back before yeah. the Saigon, before the Vietnamese <laughs> War. No, yeah. I'm, I'm connected. We were we were in uh, Miss Saigon together, and Naoko was uh, uh, she was playing uh, Kim on certain performances, and I was playing Chris on certain performances, and we got to perform together and do. Uh, but we were what? Yeah, we got to kiss and make out and sing and all sorts of stuff. So we we had worked in like musicals together, knowing how to do that kind of stuff. So it was those. Dance Thank sequences in the music. The what? No, Kat was saying she couldn't run in heels either. So yeah, we uh, so we were comfortable with all that we had to do. But yeah, I mean, that was the one thing when we got with Torchwood back together. It was like a reunion kind of for for Naoko and I. Yeah, I mean, I guess that must make it easier to build the relationship between Jack and Tosh as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, because you have to, because we were so comfortable with each other already. You know, that's that's half the battle, you know, when you're thrown into something like this brand new show with brand new friends and brand new colleagues. It's you're like, oh, can I do this? Can I do that? You know, so we kind of had a shorthand kind of thing, but I'm I, never going to work with him again because I know what happens when I work with him. <laughs> <laughs> it gets um. outrageous. I've got another question. No, what I mean is, you know, I under, I every time I work with you, the ending is not nice. Oh, no, that's right. Oh, yes. What's this? Well, because at the end of Miss Saigon, she dies. Oh, in your arms. And, and in, uh, uh, in Torchwood, she died. Yeah, I mean, you guys left to do a panto together or something and something a bit more cheerful. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then the princess. <laughs> She's crying wine tears. Um, Next question. <laughs> uh, I've got a question here from Deborah, uh, who says, "If we can get that up, uh, if you two were stuck in the past, like Jack and Toshiko, where and when would you like to go?" Oh, good question. Definitely, sometime like where we can have fun and dance and. I would love to go back to like the MGM musical era 
and because oh. I I had uh, there was a guy a, an actor who's no longer with us named Howard Keel who was in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Seven Brothers. He was a major MGM uh, Hollywood musical person. He also was uh, he played he went went into Dallas after the the Jock Hewing died. Um, anyway, a lot of people who parents might know them and things like that. How, him he came to see me in a musical once and he told me that if I was around, he said, if you were around when I was younger in the 40s, you would have been major competition for me. So I'd love to go back and do that. And if we were- I can smart, totally I'd see you. And be involved in, in uh, uh, the MGM big musicals. Yeah. How about you, Nika? Yeah, I think it has to be a, an era when when there was a lot of fun stuff and music. I love that era too. I'm just trying to try to dodge. What about what about stuff. the twenties? Yeah, like you know the the Charles all that the, yeah. the Charleston and uh, when everything was like the the when the twenties were changing. I kind of like the sixties too. Sixties and well, you were born then, so shut up. You were there too. <laughs> just. <laughs> just just slightly. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't. Anyway, next question. <laughs> next question. Uh, this one's from Nat. Um, I'll get that up. And um, it's a bit of a long one, but basically she's saying, um, she's got a little message she's saying that she's been loving torture since she was nine. Um, and <laughs> She's 22 now, so she feels like she maybe understands some of the dialogue a bit better. Um, Good. But she says, would you guys be open to a torture reunion that was maybe a prequel so then Tosh could stay? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would give my bottle of wine to everyone. And that's a lot. That's really a big commitment there. Uh, that's the one thing that we could do that with Torchwood is that it's you're never restricted to the the always what happens in the present or the future. You can go back because there's all these offshoots that have been created by Big Finish, and uh, you know doing the audios and all that kind of stuff that we've got the threads like things that happen between episodes. And stuff like that. That's one of the big things they've been doing with the Doctor Who, uh, uh, um, uh, the Doctor Who stories in, in Big Finish. So yeah, so there is a possibility. You could do that. I say that like it is a possible, but it's not up to us. It's up to the the producers, the BBC, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's you know what we just have to fingers crossed one day. Maybe there will be. Um. Yeah. That does bring me quite nicely to the next question, actually, because one of the things someone asked us was, um, for both of you, what's been your favorite Big Finish story that you've been in? Because you've both come back and done Torchwood stories in the last few years, haven't you? Gosh. I, I quite okay. like... Oh, go on. No, you go. I quite... Well, there's quite a few. I quite like the one um, Gareth just... Uh, Gareth and I just did. Yeah, because you guys just released one, didn't you? Yeah, uh, not until June, I don't think. Oh, it's not out it. um, um, Because, again, that was like this episode, like Captain Jack Harkness. It's like me and Jan uh, Tosh and Yanto kind of having their own adventure kind of thing. Um, and, you know, I think they were both kind of, not kindred spirits, but kind of... Um, um, they had a lot in common. Where is, where is he going? Wait, I'm coming back. Is it wine for me? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've gone, over, I've gone over to my bookshelf. See, I've got all my, my oh, okay. everything over there because that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that, yeah. The lives of Cap. That for me, that was a big one. The lives of Captain Jack. Yeah. Which uh, I haven't listened to it yet. Sorry. We, we got to do stories with um, Camille. Uh, with oh, Camille. Ruth, Katie Manning. Camille. Anyway, so yeah. I need to I need to listen to that. I mean, is it nice to be able to kind of keep these characters going? Obviously the fans are keeping the love alive as well, but you guys are still actually able to play these characters and kind of keep them fresh in you as well. Yeah, yeah. it was really weird at the beginning for me. Like I was really, really worried about whether I'd be able to find Tosh again. And also it was kind of painful. Um, because it was really, really hard to let Tosh go. Um, but I love it. I, I love it. And 
and I enjoy them so much, so much so to the point that when when I did um, the last one and we were recording with Gareth, we went down to my shrine, not his shrine, my shrine. <laughs> I'm still banging on about that. We were just like walking and saying, you know, it's such a shame that we we just we sh we couldn't do a couple more series because yeah. we love them so much and i truly mean this you know you hear about actors always saying oh i loved working with him no, but no. Really, really right john yeah, it was, this was a this was something special and different and it came at it yeah so i i think we all have that feeling we'd love to do like a prequel or something where we all get back together and and do that again let's do a torchwood movie oh yeah you heard it here first uh you know the campaign movie what? The campaign starts today. Torch with the movie. Listen, let's let's go fund it. Let's just do it. it. Let's just have fun and do it. Go we'll fund it. If we go to the right. we go to them with the money and go look, we got the money, guys. It's done. What can it's they say? Done. Yeah. Uh, I have a question here from Louise. Uh and Louise is asking, uh, which episodes uh were the most memorable or fun to work on and why? <laughs> Louise. That's such a hard question, girl. Don't say Miracle Day. No. Um, <laughs> all, I mean, again, I never pick favorites because all of them meant something to me that was <laughs> different and individual. I mean, and there, it just makes it, it, each of them had their own special thing, really. Um, you know, and the, in fact, like the ones, I remember one scene that I did with, uh, uh, and this was like the, we had the same kind of situation with Naoko and I with uh, Toshiko, but I had a, a scene with Owen that we were in the prison together. Oh. And it, and it was, yeah, and it was one where, you know, he was like, I think he was dead in this one. And we're, Jack was giving him a heart to heart talk and like it was his son, not his coworker. So for me, it's all, it, it's more about the relationships that were developed through the each of the episodes and the different things that happened rather than choosing one favorite. I think one that we all laugh at that we is we is meat. What are you going to show there, Naoko? No, no, I was going to share. You, do you remember this? Put it close. Can you see? Yeah. What is is that? Is that? Is that do you remember I gave you guys all of this? Like the picture. Look yeah. Up. That's all in my, I've got all of my archive stuff of that. Um, the one that makes me laugh is like us away for countryside. <laughs> oh, and me. Was it me? There's like so many of them from countryside. I just remember sitting in the middle of that field going. Vern Gorman literally almost got arrested for trying to steal the bathtub. The bathtub. <laughs> And Gareth hurt his, hurt himself by smacking his face on that the big dong bell. Yeah, and then, and I, re I remember walk. I, I think it was me walking across the parking lot while a wedding group was leaving by the fountain. Me and a pair of, I think I was wearing hot pants and a cut off shirt, and, and walking from Eve's room, having slept there all night, walking across and going. And I went. Morning. <laughs> and so then, and also sitting in the middle of a field with all of us around, you guys are all trying to do the work and I'm and it's it's a, a scene we're shooting where you can't hear what we're saying, but you can it's a visual one where they're like putting tents and stuff up, and I'm sitting in the middle of the countryside in the fucking rain and the wind going, Fucking hate this. Get me out of here. I hate camping. I hate fucking camping. Get me out of the wilderness. Get me to a hotel. <laughs> was it good prep for I'm a Celebrity, though, John? Yeah. It was, you did it was. so brilliantly on that. Thank you. I was, that was um, good. There's too many, too many episodes, really. Yeah. You know, and um, gosh, I don't know. Yeah. It sounds like the more serious the episode, the more fun you guys have behind the scenes. Because Countryside oh, yeah. is a serious episode. Countryside oh. is a weird episode. Yeah, also you kind of have to let off steam because it gets, you know, it gets in when when things are quite serious and intense, you do have to kind of take a little breather and have some fun. Otherwise, you know, 
Yeah, and also and remember we were we were doing fourteen hour twelve well twelve hour days. I would say they were. I'm saying fourteen. That's in the U.S. But we were doing about ten to twelve hour, hour days, which are long. In the hub. Yeah. In the hub. And there was a couple of times that we were actually doing. It was like two weeks of night shift that we had. Mm. Night shoots. Yeah. Yeah, and it was indoor night shoots. So it was just it was it was bizarre. Bizarre. And no, it was, it was fun. Fun. We're not complaining. No. no, we loved it. I mean, how long did it take to make an average episode? What, what was the what was the sort of time period? Uh, was no, wasn't it an eight day turnaround? Yeah, it was kind of a block, two episodes per block. Yeah, because we were we'd sometimes be shooting. Okay. Yeah, we sometimes I, would be shooting more than one ep at a time. Yeah. But also, there was times when I was doing an episode of this and then going to Doctor Who, and I was going back and forth. So I literally would finish at the hub, everyone would go home there, and I'd walk through the curtain, and I'd go right on to get changed and hair and makeup done for the TARDIS. Mm. So yeah, but I think it was an eight day turnaround. Mm. Yeah. Probably wrong, but anyway. I mean, considering like every episode is so different, especially in series one, like yeah. it's impressive to turn them around that quickly, really. Absolutely, I mean, well, that, I mean, they still do turn up, so episodic television, they turn around within either seven to eight days, depending on how, how long the, the episode is. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I feel bad we're not getting to a lot of questions. Yeah. Sorry, I'll, 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 I'll keep yeah. it coming. I'll let's, fire, let's fire those out. Okay. We've only done like four. Yeah, so this one's from Ruth, uh, and she says, uh, do you have a favorite line on the show that either you or another character said? Mine is the 21st century is when it all changes and you've got to be ready. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, mine has to be, um, I hope I did good. Yeah, that's Tasha's last line. That's very sad. I know. Well, uh, well I, I dare not say because I'll start crying. Um, because you're breaking my heart, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah that's the really sad one, isn't it? But Ginny, John, you make me cry every time. So if you start crying, I start crying. I'm not crying. But you were crying when we were watching the thing. So. Oh, yeah, no, I started crying when we were watching the episode. That was it. <sighs> That was it. Which episode? Right. The, the one that was just on? one we just watched, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right, fire well, another one. Fire you another one? Okay, the next question is from Alex, uh, who asks, is Jack returning to Doctor Who? I have no idea. Oh. Fair enough. <laughs> um, would, you like, would you like to come back? I mean, obviously, um, you were in the most recent series. You had a, you had a, uh, you had a few, it's not really a cameo, because you're in it quite a lot, but you're in um, episode five, and you, you don't, how did you feel to know you were going to be in that, but not actually meet? Oh, I was, oh, I, was I was ecstatic. I, I mean, uh, uh, when Chris gave, called me on the phone, I was in. I just actually gone to see. Um, uh, 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 I was. I was at a meeting at um, the Old Vic in London, and uh, I then got the phone call. Spoke to Chris about it. He said we want to bring Jack back. I. I've always said that if I'm asked, I will do it at the drop of a hat. And mm -hmm. then to read the episode. That was great, uh, but then I talked to Russell, and I was like, "Thanks, Russell, for allowing them to bring him back." But uh, yeah, so who knows? We will have to wait and see. Well, they're together there. They're together there. That that bodes well. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Uh, we have a question here from Troy Boy Blue. I'm not sure if that's his Christian name. Uh, he says, "How did you find out about Tortured and the plans to bring a spin-off with Captain Jack leading this wonderful show?" I was doing a cabaret in central London on uh, on um, the night that the London bombings happened with the buses, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. And I continued, Why? I did my show. I told all the fans that I was gonna continue doing it because we weren't gonna be stopped by that type of uh, terrorism and behavior. We were gonna fight back at it. So I was one of the few shows running in the that evening. It was at Pizza on the Park, I did the cabaret. And Julie Gardner was trying to get to the show because she had something she wanted to talk to me about. And I'll never forget, and I, I'm pretty sure Russell was there. It was Russell and Julie, and they came to see the cabaret. And I remember Scott, my husband, went on his motorcycle because there was nothing running to pick Julie up from the BBC, got her on the back of a bike. And I'll never forget the vision of Julie Gardner getting off of a motorcycle in a short shirt. <laughs> and coming in, and she, that, that night before the show, we had dinner and she told me, she said, we're going to give Jack his uh, own spin-off, Torchwood. 
you can't say anything about it and uh we'll uh we're excited for it ready to happen so i went on and did a show that night knowing that oh my gosh that i had just received on one of the most tragic days and uh yet to celebrate it so i had to keep it stum for quite a long time but wow. it was a major <laughs> thing for me on that evening I mean, Nako, you had a, not quite the same experience, but you had been in Doctor Who as well as as you, the same character. How? Yeah. You, what, I don't actually know the story of how they kind of came back to you and said, "We want you to come back as Doctor Doctor Sato." Well, it, it was completely out of the blue. Um, I, uh, I I remember getting the script for Doctor Who, and I didn't know who Doctor Who was. Please don't judge me. <laughs> Um, but it really was like Doctor Who. Uh, I, I looked up TARDIS in the dictionary, couldn't find it, and I like, called my agent, and he put the phone down. He was laughing so hard. Um, so that was my first <laughs> uh, introduction to Doctor Who. Never in a gazillion, gabillion, trillion years did I ever think that what I did in Doctor Who would lead me to this, you know. Um, I'm so I'm so grateful, and it's funny because um, I had kind of already said yes to another job. <clears throat> uh oh! <laughs> and um, I had just packed everything, put everything in storage, and I was flying out to live in LA. Um, and as I was on the plane to LA. I got to LA, I checked my phone, which I don't usually do, and checked my voicemail, and it was my agent saying, do not leave LAX, get back on the plane right now. Do not leave the airport, turn around, you need to be here for this. So I went back and met with Richard and all the guys. Um, so that's that's how it happened. <laughs> So yeah, I mean it's almost dramatic. Hey. Enough to be an episode of Torchwood. What's that? It's almost it dramatic. is an episode of Torchwood. Yeah, <laughs> don't leave yeah. the airport. <laughs> yeah, he's like, do not leave the airport. I just saw a comment on the thing saying someone said, um, "When I didn't get the memo about John Barrowman's hair, it's been what a year." <laughs> people need to catch up. People aren't people aren't people aren't following enough. You know, people need real to color go. kids. Blonde. It can always go back. Anyway. Uh, we have a question here, which I think we've slightly covered, but I'll put it up anyway, uh, from Jay LaPook, I think his name is, uh, who asks, um, was Jack intended to, you know, possibly have to spin off or Helm Torture, or did it just develop naturally? Uh, here's the story. Uh, Russell, before he started writing for Doctor Who and was commissioned to do the new Doctor Who with uh, Chris Eccleston, Billy Piper, and myself, he was actually going to write something called Excalibur, mm. which was a show that became Torchwood. So it was originally, he wanted to do the show Excalibur, and then they said, well, we'll let you do what you, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here the, the story because I'm sure there's more detail and I hope Russell doesn't mind. But then they said, you know, would you do Doctor Who? He went off and, and started writing and doing Doctor Who. And that's when they then allowed him to branch off to do Excalibur, but then he decided to call it Torchwood. Uh, and that was the name that they'd been using as a Doctor Who code name, wasn't it? Correct. Uh Correct. Right. And right. I can't tell you what my code name is for Captain Jack when I did the uh, uh, Doctor Who episode when I came back. Why not? Is it is it still secret? Because it's something that's used very quite. It's used quite often. Oh, uh, so they use it for other characters. Hmm, intriguing. Okay, I won't push. I won't push. I, I know what I'm beat. Um, I think John, this is another one from you for you. Sorry, from Erin. Who asked? I don't have my glasses on. Go. All right, I'll just read it out. Uh, how much input did you get into how Captain Jack was written over the series, and what part of his personality are the most and least like you? And Nico, I think you can answer that as well. Um, Tosh. I put my trust in the writers because I think that they know what they're they do their job, I do mine. Mm. And if there was any questions that we had, we would always you know say during the table read that we didn't feel this was right or whatever. But very few stuff and and russell and julie and uh all, you know like catherine and all the rest of the writing team put their trust in us to know that we knew what we were doing character wise but what the the brilliance of the the writers was when they saw our personalities in the characters and they started to write for not only the character but also for our personalities 
So that sassiness, yeah. cheekiness, that that's me. That that flirtatious is John. Um, you know, so that that that's the brilliance of writers when they see that and they then connect into it. And that's what makes characters on television, I think, characters like Toshiko, Jack, Gwen, Owen, uh, and um, uh, uh, Yanto so popular is because the audience can see the personality of the person, but they don't know it's their real personality. Does right. that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I get what you mean. Um, Nika, was that your experience as well? Sorry. <laughs> sorry I'm sorry. I'm calling you. I'm going to I think, yeah, I've always said Chris Chibnall and Russell are aliens. <laughs> um, they actually have x ray vision. Uh, which I find very disconcerting. I can see um, right in. About eight different brains because the amount of information those men, especially Russell, has in his head. Oh. And he, I, there was never, and I say this hand on heart, there was never once, actually, there was once, when I read a script and gone, that's not right. They know the characters so much better than us. They know us so much better almost than we do. Um, they see straight through things and they are so articulate and so good in expressing everything that needs to be expressed. And I think that was the biggest joy. It's, it's always about the writing. Yeah. It always comes down to the writing. Yeah. We're just puppets. And the better the writing, the more natural and real it is and one of the great things about tosh was you know i think a lot of people um related to her mm. i didn't i related to her uh on quite a few levels um but you know i adored her and um you know she did her best like we all do you know and and it's the it's the layers and the nuances and every word, every syllable is is chosen for a reason. And obviously but, such a great team of writers as well. And so many yeah. of them have gone on to do really great things. Yeah. So great, Brilliant. so great. Um, we've got another question here from Andrew, or oh, sorry, from Andrea, uh, which is for John, uh, which is, uh, which Jack did you prefer to play? Romantic Devil May Care, Doctor Who Jack, or the much darker? Oh, good question. I, I, I like again. I don't answer favorites, but I like both of the quest, both of the doc, the the the, the Jacks. Because, you have to choose. No, I won't choose because what's great about Captain Jack is in Torchwood, he's the leader and he's got all the pressure on his shoulders of 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 the group and also taking care of everybody. And that kind of sacrifice that he has to do. Whereas in Doctor Who, the doctor's the leader. And Jack can take a step back and be more fun and be a little more outrageous and also, uh, uh, you know, be more whimsical in some of the stuff that he does because he knows that the doctor is in charge and he would never step on the doctor's shoes. So that, it was literally, excuse the pun, putting on an old coat. Yeah. It, was, it was as easy as that. It, and I was back there immediately, and people were like, "Oh my god!" And I remember the the others in the the show saying, "Jesus, do we have to keep up with that energy?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah." <laughs> I mean, I guess it, we're all different with different people, right? You know, we're different with our friends, with our families, and that's kind of Jack. He's got his talk yeah. family. He's got his Tardis family. Of course, and I think that's what also worked in in this last time I was in. It was when I was uh, Jack was that high energy. And you could see the character of Graham, uh, um, you know, uh, looking at Jack like, "What the heck?" <laughs> and it I love it. dynamic putting those two characters together. Yeah, um, I have a question from I think the name is Tiziana, um, who, which for both of you, which says, uh, "If you could choose any character from the Hooniverse to join the Torchwood team, who would it be?" Oh, that's so hard. Anyone? Anyone. Anyone you can think of. I'm trying to, I am trying, well, I would, I, it's not possible, but uh, I would say I'd have to go back and I'd have to choose, I have two choices. I would either choose uh, Elizabeth Sladen, Sarah Jane Smith, mm -hmm. 
to be brought in to be part of Torchwood to kind of be the person to put Jack in his place. Mm. She doesn't like she doesn't like uh, Sarah Jane. Never liked guns. Never liked violence. Oh, that's was, a good one. She was a smart woman. She was a, a character that was before her time. She was a journalist. She stood up to the doctor. So I think that would be a great mix. And also, uh, I'd love to bring in um, uh, 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 Donna Noble, Catherine Tate's character. Oh, someone's just said that too. Yeah, because uh, that, the the humor, because uh, Donna liked Jack. Because remember, in that when she saw him on the screen for the first time, she's like, "And who is that?" <laughs> It's the pairing we we got not enough screen time of, but maybe with Big Finish or you know or something like that. Yes, that's true. You that that could possibly happen. Well, fingers crossed. Uh, I've got another question here from Karen, um, who wants to know if there were to be a new Torchwood series commissioned, is there a particular story you'd like to see or setting or any ideas? No, I'm I'm happy if it's being made as long as the right. I'm sure Naoko agrees with this. As long as the right the writers are top notch and they know what they're doing. Let we just like she said, we're puppets. We'll go with it. So I wouldn't. Yeah, everyone knows our characters now. Even the fans, yeah. you know, our fan fan family, almost know our characters better than almost. We yeah. Are. So I think that's. I I wouldn't say any specific thing. I I just have be happy if it were made again. I yeah. have a request. Go on. Just just for a moment, I want her to have a happy moment in her love life just once just yeah. just well she did didn't you shag that soldier yeah but then he had to go that's true yeah because it was the it was it was it was owen and then there was the alien who was you know reading your mind and then there was the soldier who had to go back in time and adam and, and she also had a lesbian relationship yep so yeah. listen, girl, you've been around just as much as Jack. <laughs> I have to say, I have to say there was one day, which I, I mean, a lot of the guys know, but there was one day when I had to do like Tosh's apartment, like in the same day. So the first, um, first thing in the morning, I had to be in bed with Brian Dick, who played Adam. And then they were like, right, moving on. And then the first AD was like, okay, now just stay in the bed. We'll just bring Anthony in. And I went, hang on, hang on. I've just been snogging and kissing Brian. And now can I at least like goggle? Can I at least stretch my arms? <laughs> it was the happiest day of my life. No, I'm just not saying that. <laughs> bring in the next one. Uh, the next question is an episode specific question, um, which is about uh, who do you think Billis Manger is and what are his intentions? So uh, obviously that's oh. the villain in the episode. I mean, because he's still, still quite mysterious, isn't he? We're not quite sure what his deal was. No, we're not. We're, we're not sure, but Billis can control. Uh, uh, what? No, I was just saying I love you too. Sorry. Uh, um, Billis can control. Was it? What was his name? Abigan? Abigan? Abaddon? Abaddon. Abaddon, Abagadendon. Um, I think Billis might, you know, if that were to have been explored more, I think Billis would have been someone that you might have, he was the keeper of time. Or maybe, I'm, again, this is not lore. This is not from the, the, the history of, of Torchwood or Doctor Who, but it would have been great if like Billis was a scorned or shunned uh, Time Lord. Hmm. That would have been quite cool because he, yeah, it's never, we never really see that kind of time travel again, do we? Like he says, he just sort of walks through time. And that's yeah. cool. You don't need a TARDIS, with, a vortex manipulator, hands ease. free. Sorry? He, I said with ease, he walked yeah. through time. So, you know, that would have been quite cool. Um, I've got another question here from uh, Siro Chan, uh, who asks, Do you know. Oh, Jack I know her. Hi. Oh, Satoko. Hey, Satoko. I know Satoko too. We all know her. Oh, there you go, old friends. Uh, well, she was wondering if you know Jack's real name. Uh, no, we don't. We we know that he is, um, we know that he took Jack, Captain Jack Harkness, but I don't think we've ever, I, I, I mean, I'm saying this, actually, because it's been a while since we've done the book, I can't remember if we, clarif if we worked something into uh, Exodus Code that my sister and I worked into to find out Jack's name. 
I'm, I'm vague on that one and sorry I can't answer it off the top, but I know we wrote all the Torchwood comic books and there might've been something in there where we did clear with Russell, Jack's name or what it would be, um, but I'd really have to go back and look at that. So that's a question that you've stumped me off the top, but I'm sure somebody will know the answer to it. Yeah. They all I don't, the answer, you know, I don't think we have though. <laughs> um, there's a question here from- Javik, uh, yes. Declan again, uh, which is- uh, we sorry, talk... sorry, someone's just put up, it's Javik. Javik, oh, of course it was, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was Javik Beotor Thane or something. Javik Beotor Thane, that's correct. You're yeah. absolutely right. You're right. absolutely right. It was in Javik Beotor Thane. Um, so here's a question which we kind of covered a little bit earlier, but um, just wondering if you guys have any more memories from filming the episode that we all just watched, Captain Jack Harkness. Anything else we didn't cover earlier? Oh, John did an amazing um, behind the scenes uh, song, right? Yeah, I did a song from Anything Goes because I had just finished doing that. Oh, God. Show the end, and we, we ad libbed it, but we couldn't put it on the DVD because of copyright. Oh, uh, right. So I don't know who has it, or I don't know if it's out there, but it would be lovely if somebody just let it slip online. I think it's... Is it on one of the DVDs? No, I thought it was. Do you guys know? I'm um, sure somebody out there knows. Somebody somebody will know. I mean, if we, we don't know, but a million people in a minute will just be telling us in the comments all the places. Yeah. And by the way, Matt Rippey, yay. Yeah, Matt Rippey. Great performance. And then yeah. all the other guys, too. I mean, that was a really touching episode. Mm. Yeah, it was. I yeah. mean, I mean, I've got a question here about the episode, actually, from Alison, um, who was asking, uh, which is quite an interesting question. How do you think the dynamic of the episode would have changed if Jack was trapped with a different member of the Torchwood team in the 14th? Ah, that's a good well, question. It would, have, Great. it would have been a different episode. Yeah. It would have, it, and, and also the manner in how they would get back would have been different because Toshiko would have been... Yeah, it would have been uh, easy. <laughs> there wouldn't have been a problem because Toshiko would have been in the hub. They mm. would have figured out something had happened in the time rift. Oh, yeah. Um, also, uh, then let's say if it was Gwen and... Let's, let, let, let's say it was uh, Owen and Jack. Owen might have wanted to stay because he could have then got his... He could have then traveled in time or lived to meet up with the, the, the woman that he, uh, you know, the... I call her the Amelia Earhart character that came through the time through the time uh, uh, rift. Anyway, so there's all those different things that could happen, but yeah, it would be a completely different episode. Well, Owen would just be off snogging someone. Yeah. Um. Oh, nice hair. <laughs> and Yanto would just be making coffee. Yeah. Um, and having sex with Jack. <laughs> and then there would be a threesome between him, uh, Yanto, and. Uh, the real Captain Jack Harkness. So it would turn into something completely different. Uh, I'm seeing in the comments, by the way, that, that uh, the Anything Goes video is on YouTube or yeah. if people are so inclined to find it. So what do they look up? Just John Barrowman, Anything Goes, Torchwood? I, I guess so. I loved it. I, I loved watching you film. I just love that. You're so good at that. Um, I've got a question here, which is um, from Matty, uh, Matty Dwyer. Uh, it's quite a long one, but he basically says, um, if Torture was to get a new series, would you prefer the Torture team to be Captain Jack, Gwen, and maybe some uh, Doctor Who companions, kind of like Martha Jones in Torchwood, or would you like a new crew, but maybe with keeping Jack and Gwen? I think we've already uh, we've already said what we'd love to do is do uh, 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 something that is an episode that goes back, so where we have everybody from the original, mm. but also because I know how dramas work, and we also know that there's also has to be a change. So it would be good if they could mash up a new team, but we travel back to be with the old team in time to solve the problem that is happening in the future with the old team. So they can create a new Torchwood team with uh, Jack and everybody th that is there, but he goes back to be with the old team because he needs the answers. Yeah, because we're like consultants uh, now. That's quite clever. And you could do it that would work. You could even do a bit of time travel element with that, right? So Not that I've thought about it. <laughs> Consultants, <laughs> Tosh, the IT consultant. I still don't yeah. know the IT consultant. Finally living her dream. Um, because I think as we, well, yeah, because Jack, oh, never mind, I can't, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, I almost gave something away. 
Um, well, well, we'll save you from that. Um, someone asked in the comments uh, over here, I've just lost it. Um, how old were you both when you started acting? How old would, uh, professionally? Uh, I suppose so, yeah. I guess when was your, how old were you when you got your first professional acting job? My biggest professional job was when I met John at Miss Saigon. That was my first big job. I'd done like a couple of plays. I did a Brecht play the year before, and I was like 17. Wow. I was literally 17. She was a child. Um, I was, uh, my, first, my first performing job was, professional one was at a place called Opryland USA in Nashville, Tennessee, <clears throat> where also people like Kristen Chenoweth and started there and did stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, but my first big West End job was Anything Goes opposite Elaine Page in 1989 mm -hmm. uh, at the Prince Edward Theater. Myself, Bernard Cribbins, and yeah. uh, Catherine Evans. And uh, that was my first big professional job. And I was 21, 22. Wait, that was before Live and Kick? No. That was before. That was before Live and Kicking. Live and Kicking was in ninety, oh. like in ninety four, ninety five ish. Yeah, that was Maybe. post Saigon, right? Yeah. No, I did. What well, anything goes. No, anything, anything goes was after Saigon. No, no, anything goes. Nineteen eighty nine was before Saigon. <gasps> Saigon. I was. The, I did. I had done Saigon, Phantom, and Matador, and then Matador. I went. I, I did miss Saigon after. No, sorry, I got that wrong. People, I don't get my own timeline right. Um, mm -hmm. I did. I did. Anything goes. Nineteen eighty nine, and then I was asked to go sing for Cameron for Chris, uh, but I was already booked in Anything Goes, so I couldn't do it. But then when I finished Anything Goes, I went in as the alternate Chris. Yeah. In Saigon, and we used to rehearse together. Correct. Yeah. We were in rehearsals. How funny is that? I have okay. photos of us from 700 years ago. You should post them. I know, I will. I have time to look for them too. Yeah, that's true. We've all got time now. <laughs> yeah. I've, um, yet, I've, yet to, I've yet to go into that phase of like digging through stuff now because oh. at the moment I'm just like, I can't, I can't get myself to do it. <laughs> um, I find it hard enough cleaning the freaking bathroom. You're Japanese. I know you, John. I don't like cleaning the bathroom. Why? I just don't. What? It's I, I, that's it. I don't like cleaning toilets. I'll clean the shower. I'll clean the floor. I'll clean the bathtub. But don't ask. I, but I have to. I clean the toilet. <clears throat> well, I feel like we've taken a tangent way, in the show. By the way, stop reporting for people. Regrets. Uh, we have a question here from Katie, uh, who asks, "If you were to choose an alien from Doctor Who to protect Earth against in an episode of Torchwood, which species would you pick, and why?" Weevils. I Who? Weevils. Uh, I, I would be Cybermen. Uh, oh, they scare me. Yeah, see, I'd somehow like to turn the Cybermen to, in an alternate universe, to protect rather than to <laughs> delete. Lisa! Oh, no, that's cool. Yeah. Did you, did you review, because there was this, the Cyber Woman app, wasn't there? But there weren't. Um... Well, her name was Lisa. That's yeah. what Lisa! we were Lisa! Lisa! <laughs> Um, all right, I have a question here from, I'm not sure who this one's from, because it's quite a large image. Um, but they, oh God, that's very small, sorry. Uh, he said, if Torchwood returns, and I hope it does, what would you think would be an effective and amazing return of Captain Jack Harkness? P.S. I love you and your work. Um, I think that, uh, that again, that's all, that's all kind of like hype speculation of what it would be. It would, it's up to the writers, really. But, you know, how they bring, at the moment, Yeah, I can't. I can't go any further. That's I can't right. tell you anything. That's okay. Sorry, I have to. I have because it will lead to things, and I can't tell. I'm stum. Fair enough. Uh, got a question here from Belinda about uh, the episode we just watched. Uh, yes, is basically asking. Um, so in this episode, showing the more vulnerable side of Jack, uh, do you think the storyline deepened this belief of self acceptance to individuals struggling with their identity? Does a character like Jack lead to a positive mindset for audiences? I think maybe. I think they're asking. Um, I know what they're, I know what they're, I, I know what they're saying. Yes, it does definitely lead to uh, people. Uh, <clears throat> the one thing that I'm very proud of with Jack and proud of with uh, Torchwood and the things that happened in Torchwood with people's relationships 
is we kind of, uh, Jack is unapologetic for who he is. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are need any uh, kind of positive feedback from someone, watch Captain Jack Harkness because he shows that you can be yourself. You can be unapologetic. You don't have to, uh, you know, kowtow to people and apologize for being you. That's the big thing. So, yes, it does. A show like Torchwood and Doctor Who helps people with their identity and deciding and, you know, uh, being their real true selves. So it's a big thing. Especially, um, especially Torchwood, I, I yeah. you know, and Doctor Who as well. But I have had so many fan family members come up and say, you know, thank you for, and it's not actually us. It's really Russell and yeah. the readers. You know, thank you for saying it's okay to be me. You know, yeah. and the world is big enough for everyone to be who they want. Yeah. You know, as long as you're not hurting anyone. You know, you could be, there's only one you and and you're allowed to be you, you it's know. It's a hell of a lot more fun in life being yourself than pretending to be somebody oh, else. Oh, God, right. And, if people, and my message to everybody is, if people don't like you, sorry, I'm going to just say it. If people don't like you for who you are, fuck them, get rid of them. Yeah, mm. they're no you, good. That's close people to you, everything. If they're not allowing you to be yourself, you have to take control of your own life, be who you are, be proud, be positive. And forget the people who don't want to uh, forget yeah. the negativity in your life. Yeah. Uh, I'm, just looking at the, I'm just looking at the comments, by the way, and a lot of people are saying you seem to have a lot of secrets, John. A lot of people. What? A lot of people seem to be saying you, you, you have a lot of secrets, a lot of things you're almost revealing. People, 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 yeah. People. Too bad. <laughs> you got to keep on wanting more. Yeah. Um, Captain have Jack says I'm not. My crochet Captain Jack says I'm not saying anything. <laughs> and by the way, just so you know, I'm not drinking like copious amounts. I'm like sipping so she, she's she's japanese she sips very elegant i'm a lady she's a lady um i haven't got an image for this one but um someone sent a question saying uh, which of the cast uh, is most like their character oh. <laughs> all of us i think all of us we're a lot like our characters well mm. but you well not uh, I think all of us, in a sense, I mean, Burn is, but... Our, our, our characters kind of bled into being off camera, too. Because you remember those times when we'd film and we'd finish a scene and we'd be like, <laughs> just go, but... <laughs> like, the Risen Mitten... Doing things with the mitten, the risen mitten. Oh, like, yeah, come on. Wrong. I think we're all, yeah, we're all a bit like our characters. Extension. Extension. Yes. Extension yeah. But I think, I think, John, I think you're the, you're like Bullseye. You're like, you're so Captain Jack, and Captain Jack is so you. And I think it's a leadership quality. And yeah. Wow, have you well, been looking at look at your arms? You're looking very buff. This shirt I don't like though because it's it's like an XXL somebody gave me and I thought I'd wear it because it's a My Little Pony Jack Harkness mashup, see? But your arms are looking great. Really? I like looking very I'm sorry, this is a QA. We're just like nattering like we're just <laughs> Did you take a screenshot of that? No, no, I didn't. I I, 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 I did. I didn't. I had my hands up. Ready, go. No. Perfect. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me do it. Hang on. Sorry, guys. We're just like rambling and not answering any of your questions. Hang on. Yeah. On the computer. Look at your Get arms. <gasps> John, um, by the way, a lot of people I showed this earlier. There's the original squareness gun from oh, nice. Doctor Who. Where the doctor takes it from me and gives me a banana instead. Anyway. Uh, sorry, I'm rambling on. Next question. Okay. Next question. Um, someone asks, uh, Howell, I think the name is, or Howell, asks, uh, Howell. do you still have the coat or maybe coats? I do. I still have the, <clears throat> in fact, when I was last on Doctor Who, again, I took my coat. Uh, that was one of the ones that I, I, I uh, got from Ray Holman, who, brilliant designer Ray, who does a lot more than just Doctor Who and Torchwood. <clears throat> um, uh, Fleabag one of them, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. uh, 
anyway, Ray uh, took my coat and fixed it and built, put new shoulders and stuff in it and built it back up to making it brilliant again because I use it when I go to conventions and I always reveal underneath something of my twist of something uh, uh, Hoovian or Torchwoodian to kind of uh, entice the fans. Yes, so there we go. Uh, now, did you take anything from Torchwood? Oh, yeah, I, I took the whole hub. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, wait, I got to show – keep talking amongst yourselves. I got to show you this other thing that I have that – Oh, snap, we have the same thing. Well, I know. That's, it's a good light. Yeah. Uh, where's the – keep talking. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, well, apart from the whole hub, uh, did you keep any costumes or props? Yeah, I've got most of the costumes. Um, oh. That's my thing on every job. Obviously, I ask. Uh, politely i don't steal um but yes i got two of the codes i've got i've i've pretty much got everything i even got um my um warm thing from everest which makes me look like a michelin man um but i've got that um i think burns stole in a lot more props i've only got like a couple of things uh from the hub but Burn, it turns out he's he's been like stealing a lot. He was Instagramming about it. Oh really? Yeah, we had to chat to him about that. Yeah. I mean, he's not here to himself, unfortunately. <laughs> I've got a bunch of memorabilia that I have um, from from the show, but uh, I, in fact, I have the Dalek that well, not from Torchwood, but the Dalek in my kitchen what? is the Dalek that I got. The one that shot Captain Jack. But this, if ever you see Captain Jack <clears throat> reading a book at his desk, that's the book. Oh, very nice. Avengers in space, and I have the book. I took that. That's a nice souvenir. Not too, not too bulky either. Not too bulky. Just no. okay. There's, I've, I've, tr I've trunks of stuff in the, in the garage and in storage that are just things that I've... I've got all my scripts. Here. Scott, say hi to everybody. Hey, happy birthday! Oh, so no swearing, huh? You no, know, you can uh -oh. swear, but it's Scott's happy birthday. birthday. Oh, yeah. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, that's everybody Hello. commenting. Oh, blimey. Massive. I'm cooking you your lunch. Okay. On my oh. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that was me told. But I'm getting oh, yeah, to lunch. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, Scott, we'll just do a couple more questions and then John can get I to know, it. Fine, it's fine. Um, I have a question here, uh, which I don't have a picture for, but uh, Ash Gold official has asked, who would you like to play your characters if the series was remade with a new cast? <gasps> Absolutely nobody. They can piss off. <laughs> oh, my God, John. What? I absolutely agree with John. There would never, it would never be the same. It would be the same. It's, it, it's, you know, who, who is Captain Jack but, but John Barrowman? Who is Tosh but Naoko Mori? It's, it's exactly. It would never be the well, same. Well, I mean, it, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Well, well, while you ponder that, uh, I've got another question here. This is from the uh, from uh, Doctor Who fan page. Uh, they're asking. Uh, would you like to see Gwen Cooper return to Doctor Who just like Jack did in the latest series? Who? Uh, uh, Ethan, uh, Gwen Cooper. Who? <laughs> sure, but Gwen, the, uh, is it returning as Gwen or as Gwyneth? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think they mean Gwen as Gwen. Yeah, I mean, I think there's possibility for any of the characters uh, for because we all did that. We all were in that the crossover episode the, of um, the final... What was it? Final days? Uh, the Stolen and, Earth Journey's End. Yes, Journey's End. We were all there uh, doing our own bit. Uh, you know, there was Sarah Jane doing from Sarah Jane Adventures. There was, uh, you know, Torchwood. Uh, Eve was at Torchwood. I was on the TARDIS. There was all different things going on. Everybody was involved. So, yeah, it was all it, – there's total possibilities. Um, Not everyone. Ben, sorry? Not everyone was involved. <laughs> That's true. No, there's a little photo of you, though. There's a tiny little yeah, photo of you. There was. There was a photograph of you. You were there. And you were in Doctor Who before everyone else. Yeah, yeah. first day, first scene of the first day of shoot. So there you go. So you got that. It's just it's just poor old uh, Bern Gorman who has, who has missed out, unfortunately. Oh, he, he wasn't in it? Uh, well, I think he was in the photo, maybe, but he wasn't he wasn't in it either. Yeah. Sorry, Binny. 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 Uh, 
I have a question here uh, for you, Neoko, uh, yeah. from Ben Jones, uh, who asks, uh, how did you find playing such a different version of Tosh in the episode, Adam? Oh yeah, that was fun. That was fun. But a little bit scary because, you know, I didn't know how it would be, but it was it was a lot of fun because it just meant that I could kind of break out and she can break out and have some, I mean, he's, they're so clever. Who thinks that, right? The writers are amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. so original. How lovely. Um, but yeah, it was great fun, but it was kind of embarrassing as well. Um, but also it was great fun, especially with Burn, because he was now playing like the mousy character because I felt like I was kind of getting back at him a little bit, you know? Definitely. So sorry to interrupt. Someone just said the the Dalek that shot me was supreme and bronze, and I'm just saying I had it painted. <laughs> <laughs> you but, but you got to know you're not going to be called out on this stuff. You know, you I know that, but it's like people just come on. I really need a haircut, by the way. Look how <laughs> oh talk about haircuts. I've yet to. I bought a pair of like proper scissors. No, Jack, you can't come over here. I bought a proper pair of scissors to cut my hair, but I'm I, I don't know. I don't I don't think I can do it. I uh, I actually snuck out just before the lockdown to get one final. You final did? Mm, just 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 because I knew we might be in it for a while. And you that, agree? That's good call. It actually kind of leads me because we did have a couple of people asking um, how you guys are coping. You know, how are you guys getting on with being stuck at home? You know, obviously we're doing this partly to reach the fans who can't see each other and see you in person. Yeah. Um, how are you guys getting along with all that? Coco, you go ahead. Well. Um, I I'm fine, you know. Thank you. Um, uh, and my family's fine. Unfortunately, I have a couple of friends, actually more than a couple of friends, who who do have the symptoms. Yeah. Um, half of them have about four of them have been tested. It's so odd. Um, and I kind of joked on Twitter saying, you know, maybe this is the kind of thing that used to come through the rift, you know but we're almost kind of living in a very different fictional almost times you know which is slightly odd but well the I thing is it ain't fictional no and but what i have to say is you know <clears throat> there's you know it is horrendous and it's really hard but you know what we're all in it together yeah. um we're all alone together and um, we can get through this, you know? Um, and maybe if there's also a little lesson in there somewhere for us to stop and think and enjoy our, you know, not take things for granted. I don't know. Um, I, for me, I, the first couple of weeks were difficult for me. I kind of came off social media for a little bit. I yeah. The adjusting just, is hard. Yeah, I had a hard time, but I'm glad that I'm. We had we had to come, but we were intending on being back in the UK next week. <clears throat> but uh, because of the whole situation, we had to kind of augment our plans. I'm glad I was able to come back over here because my parents would have been by themselves. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and the other thing is that Scott's parents are by themselves in the UK. However, they've got a great network in the neighborhood right. that are helping to look after them. And I've we've got some people positioned that if they need help to you know, basically get them what they need. But I'm glad I'm with Scott. Um, it is difficult. I mean, you you go to bed at night. We haven't been out of the house for, except to go buy groceries and to exercise. Mm -hmm. We have not been out of the house now for almost three and a half weeks. Because as soon as, as soon as we came back from the UK, we put ourselves in lockdown for yeah. 20, for 14 days. Yeah. And our 14 days all passed. And now we're into now the third, three and a half weeks. So, but the thing in here in the States is uh, California, we're lucky. We did the lockdown long before the rest of the country. You guys have cars uh, too. Huh? You, you know, a lot of it is car. A lot of yeah. driving. Yeah. Our governor put us in lockdown ahead of time. And I remember we were sitting here. It was like the third day back and. Uh, they said California, you know, uh, Riverside County, where we live in Palm Springs, mm -hmm. restaurants, bars, everything shut, done. And that I, left, one I think I left like two days before you left here because I left on the day when uh, 
President Trump said, no one coming from Europe. And yes, I, I was, I was, I was on the, like, leave now before you get locked. I was, on, I was on the plane the day they announced that. Wow. What? what? I was on the plane the day they announced that right, coming, right. coming to yeah, the US. I remember because we, we messaged we each other. So we're front. always like, he. I leave when John's coming back because I don't like him. <laughs> oh, sorry, did you hear that? Yeah. So when he comes back, I'll go back to LA. We just yeah. we just keep doing that. <laughs> but the, the the one thing that we need to just remember always and and is that you know stay at home. It's important to stay at home because and I say this because of family members and we've got friends we know who are who have the virus or who have had the virus. Yeah. But we're staying home because I've got my parents who are in a, a high risk age bracket. My mother also has asthma. Scott's parents are the same. So for us to stay home and everyone to stay home, it protects the people who are not as who are more vulnerable. And also our NHS workers, our healthcare workers who are on the front line, we have to do everything to keep them safe because if they're not safe, we can't be held. I mean that seriously, seriously, NHS, all the key workers, and like I I'm like I, I'm not worthy. You know, all we have to do is sit at home. These people Correct. are out there every day. Yeah. Scott showed me a picture of a woman who was it was during the bombings in London in World War II and she was sitting picking through rubble, picking her life out of the rubble. Mm -hmm. And he showed me the picture because I was suffering from major anxiety and, yeah. and really having a problem with it the first week or two. Of course. And he no. showed me the picture and he said, This puts it into perspective. We're being asked to stay home, to watch television, to watch Netflix. Granted, there's a lot of people who are not working and we, we, we're, you know, money is going to be an issue for people. But the thing we have to remember is we're just being asked to stay home and we can do it. We can yeah. do it. And while we're all at home together, you know, we've got these great kind of online fan Thank events. Yeah. Bringing people hey, together. Guys. Um, and it's been so great. I, I, I don't want to speak for you two, but just seeing the comments flow in, seeing everyone, you know, so supportive and so excited to just, you know, chat about Torchwood again. It's yeah. It's been really great. Um, and what, the, would, what, would, what would be nice is to let's see how the numbers did because we can do it again. That's true. Yeah. I mean, that's the plan. The plan is um, we're, we haven't announced a date yet, but the plan is we're going to do another one of these. We're going to do uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which... Um, did that very come in like second or... We did a poll for series one and for series two, just to kind of split it up a bit. Um, so that's for next one. We'll we'll announce the dates for that soon, um, and we'll have we'll have more of the lovely uh, Torchwood cast back as well. Um, and that's going to be very exciting. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll try and spread them out a bit, so we're not doing them all at once. Um, but yeah, no, I think that should be really fun. We'll, um, we'll get through all twenty six episodes. Yeah. yeah, we'll do that. We'll do kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Then we'll go back to everything changes. Then we'll go to meet, and we'll just sort of zip around. A bit, yeah, you know? uh, the one thing I could, just just before we go to all the fan family out there and everybody, thank you very much for always supporting Torchwood, Doctor Who, all of us. And uh, just remember, stay home, stay safe, and look after people in your community. If you know there's people who need help getting groceries, food, medical stuff, uh, medicines, or errands done for them. Uh, do it for them. Give it to them through their their gate or their leave it at their front door. Stay away from them, but help your neighbors. That's the most important thing. And Definitely. never ever, please never be lonely. If you ever get lonely, just tweet us and yeah, tweet, and tweet or, or or speak to somebody on uh, the fan base on our instas, our social. People will talk to you and help you out of the tough times. We're family, family. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, listen, thank you both so much for joining me uh, from, you know, across from Palm Springs and across from London uh, and for chatting for so long. We've been chatting for almost an hour and a half, uh, which is crazy. There's just so much <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Scott. <laughs> anyway, Scott's keen to get to one. Uh, so, um, but thank you, everyone who's been watching as well. Um, you know, obviously, these sort of these sort of online events can't happen without the people watching um, and tweeting along and sending in their questions. And yeah, you know, keep your eyes peeled because we'll be doing loads more of these uh, for Torchwood for other shows as well. And you know, we'll we'll all get through this. We'll all we'll all edit yeah. well. positive, and it'll be great. Radio Times, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Radio Times. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, bye everybody. Love, bye. Bye. <laughs>